Hey, so this video is a more detailed walkthrough of the article I'm writing on how designers can get started using Cursor. Um, so I'll walk you through the setup, kind of the tools I use, and how you can get something uh, published on a live link and start messing around with it. So uh, if you haven't read the article, you can check out the article for more of a high level thoughts on like when to use Figma, when to use Cursor, um, and things like that. But I'm going to walk through the tools. Uh, to get you up and running. So the first thing you'll want to do if you have not done it is download Cursor. Um, get that installed and set up and running. It's pretty simple. They have a great free tier you can use. From there, we'll need to set up a GitHub account if you don't have one. So make sure you sign up for a GitHub account. And then something I love to use is their desktop experience. So you can download that and it gives you a GUI interface where you can kind of interact with the code, commit your changes and publish it back up to the repo. So you'll want to create your GitHub account. And the next account you'll need is a Vercel account. Uh, this is where we'll get our starting template. It's going to be Next.js based, uh, which is React. And this is also where we'll deploy and host our prototype. Uh, it's very seamless, very easy to use. Every time you commit a change from GitHub, it automatically gets published. So you don't really ever have to come back here um, unless you're like troubleshooting your deployment or just getting your live link, right? So. Go ahead and create a Versal account. I recommend logging in with your GitHub account, so it's pretty in sync. And then from there, we'll want to head over to their resources and templates. So depending on what kind of prototype you're trying to build, they have a bunch of places to get you started. Um, if you're doing uh, an AI chatbot, you can do start with their template. Um, if you're building a blog, there's blog templates in here, etc. A bunch of stuff you can look for. The one we'll use today is Next.js Boilerplate. It's just a base install of Next.js. Uh, gives us the foundation to start running. We'll go ahead and hit deploy for the boilerplate. You can see it's connected to my GitHub account. It's under my Vercel free hobby tier project plan. Um, you'll want to name it. And this name is what will also appear in your GitHub account. So Next.js Boilerplate, I'll put demo uh, and then we'll just hit create so this will start creating uh, you can watch the deployment happen um, we'll wait here a second looks like it's done here uh, great everything looks good so this is the dashboard uh, you can see kind of the status of it uh, where it's de deployed at so this is your live URL link you can access it here or you can click visit open it up uh, and this is our running app you can share that link with people if you want um, you can go to the repository so this will link back to your GitHub account and you can kind of see the getting started stuff you need here, which we'll run through in a second, how to get it up and running. Um, <clears throat> and then that's kind of it from here. Once we make some changes, we'll come back to the deployments area. And this is where you can see every time you commit a branch, um, it'll automatically do a new deploy. Uh, if there's any errors or anything, they'll be here. It'll, any failed deployments, they'll be here um, for you. So those are the two accounts we need. We just need a GitHub account and a Vercel account, and we're ready to go. Remember the GitHub desktop app. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Um, and what we want to do is clone that repo uh, to our local computer. So you can open it up, and you want to look for clone repository. Um, and whatever you named it in Vercel is the name you'll find here, right? So if you don't see it, you can hit refresh. but we named it Next.js Boilerplate Demo. That's it, that's the one I want. So we'll select it. The local path is where you wanna save it on your computer. Um, you can choose any location. I keep like a projects folder uh, inside of a, cold fo a code folder. Um, so we'll go ahead and save it there. And then we'll just hit clone. And so now it's pulled down onto our computer. We can now open it up inside of Cursor. We have Cursor open here. Um, pretty simple, we're gonna wanna open our project. So you'll navigate to where you save your project, um, Next.js boilerplate demo. We'll go ahead and open that up. We have the project open. Uh, we can see our files over here, the structure. We'll go through this in a second, but there are a few more things we wanna install. So we're not kind of just uh, working from scratch here. So up in the top right, there's these panel icons. We're going to uh, toggle this one, which is our terminal. First command we're going to want to run is npm install. I uh, usually do this anytime you pull down a new project. It's just going to install all the dependencies and things that you need to make the app work locally. 
Okay, so that's good to go. We can also do npm run dev, and this will uh, spin up the project on a, your local host. You can open up your local host, and you should see the same thing that was on the Vercel deployment, right? Um, here. And this is where you can like see all your changes as you make them uh, inside of Cursor. One thing we want to install are some components to start working with. Uh, we don't want to build things from scratch. We're optimizing for speed here. And so I use uh, ShadCN. It's a component library, if you will, made with Tailwind CSS. It gives you a bunch of play, bunch of components to start working with, um, like accordions, buttons, and things like that, that you'll find in most design systems. So this way you can kind of just like start taking components, building your prototype, and then style them to match your branding, uh, your own design system, etc. cetera. Um, but to get this installed, we are running Next.js, so we will uh, run this command in our terminal. So we have the local host running on this one. We're going to open up another one inside of here, and we're just going to paste that command in. And this is just going to set up our project uh, to use the ShadeCN components, and it's going to ask us a couple questions. Um, what style do we prefer? I like default. You can kind of choose your own here. Uh, what color? I like stone, kind of an earthy feel, so I'll select that one. And then do we want to use variables for theming? Uh, we'll go ahead and do yes. This way you can customize it to look more like your system easier in the future. And then at the time of this recording, uh, there is some dependency issues uh, for React 19 and Shaden. And so we're just going to want to go ahead and use uh, legacy peer dependencies for this. Uh, we'll fix this in a later step uh, going forward. But So the next step would to be uh, add in, adding in our components. And so you can do this one by one. If you visit like the accordion component, you can copy the command and add just the accordion one. I personally like to just add everything at once. That way when I'm working with cursor, uh, stuff is already installed and we don't have to like go and find it and then get it installed later. So really all we need is this first part up to the add. We'll jump back to our terminal. Inside of our terminal, we'll add that uh, command. And it's going to then prompt us, uh, what do we want to do? So we can select, go through and select the ones we do want. Or you can hit A to toggle all of them and then just hit enter. And it will start to do the installation process. It's probably going to ask us to, yeah, do the legacy peer dependencies just to get them working with React 19. Again, we'll fix this uh, before we deploy. And so what that is doing, it's... Uh, making our component library. So in the nav, you can see what's been updated here. If we open up components inside of UI, we have all of those shad CN components. You can go in here and edit these if you wanted, um, style them differently, whatever you want to do. They're here for you to work with, uh, which is great. And one of the reasons I like using this library because it's very flexible. This next step is optional, but I like to have an icon library I like to work with. I use Remix icon. It's ton of icon choices, they look great. Uh, you can choose a different one if you want. Have an icon folder full of SVGs that you're gonna use. Um, the reason I like this one is they have a nice and convenient uh, package here, NPM package here. So we'll go back into our terminal, we'll save that. Uh, we will also need to, because we have not fixed the React issue, add in this at the end just for this installation. Great, so now we have the icon library saved. Uh, you can browse those icons and add them into wherever you need pretty effortlessly. So we have the project up and running now. Uh, it's on a local host. You can start playing with components. Um, that page that we saw is under app page.tsx. Here's where you can kind of start making changes to the home page. So in the top right, you'll hit settings. Um, in here, you can go to models. You can choose the models you want to work with. I usually uh, run with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It's, it works great. Um, you can add your own API keys if you want, if you have them, uh, and kind of fiddle with the different models you want to work here. Under features, there is a code base indexing. I come here frequently to just make sure it's synced. So if I'm doing lots of changes, I want to sync it to make sure the AI knows about all of the changes we're making. It doesn't like overwrite things. 
Um, another huge feature is docs. So if you're working with any special services, you can add them here. So for example, on my last app, I was working with the Pexels API to bring in some image images. So I can add their docs link here and then reference that when I'm chatting with AI, which is fantastic. And then the last thing we'll want to do is add project rules. So project rules can help um, give your AI context on the project and how you like to do things. So like this is running Next.js. We want to use Tailwind. Here's where my components are. So we'll go ahead and add a new rule. Uh, you can name it whatever. We'll name it my custom rules. Um, and then here you can start to paste in. So you can go to this GitHub repo of awesome cursor rules and browse through them to like kind of copy one that you want to use or take pieces from different ones to start building your own. Um, I do have my own, so I'm going to paste that one in. So I will paste in my rules here. Um, and it kind of just details on like how I want things to work. You know, I want it to use TypeScript, uh, Next.js, or you'd chat C on components. Uh, any motion should be Framer. Um, another key section I like to do is show it how to organize things. So like if it's making new pages, new components, it knows where to put them where I can then go find them pretty easily. So we'll go ahead and hit command save. Our rules are ready to go. It now lives in this new file that's created under rules. Okay. And then, so I did mention about a legacy peer dependency earlier. Fix that. We'll go to package.json. Um, I'll provide this code for you, but I'm just going to paste it in here. That kind of fixes some deployment errors we'll get um, if you don't at the moment. So we'll hit command save, go back to our terminal and hit control C. That'll stop what's running. We're going to do npm install again, and then we can do npm run dev to get our local host back up and running. And what this, what we really just did is um, change the React version to the stable version, which is 18 point something. And then I removed um, no linting on the builds. Okay, so now that that's working, so you had to work with the AI. So I'm going to open up our page. This is the one we're going to want to edit. Um, there's kind of two modes to work with uh, Cursor's AI. You can up in the top right toggle this pane open, and you can have Composer. Uh, you can work with chat if you just want to like chat with an AI and then like ask a question, try to troubleshoot things. Composer will be more like sweeping changes, and this is an agent. Uh, agent will, will run that will, you know, think for itself and go out and do whatever it needs to do to implement your feature. And so I like to use Composer a lot for like large changes. Um, it can do a lot of things very quickly for me and you can iterate. And so what we'll do here is we have the page referenced here. You can also add any other reference pages you might want uh, if you're working on multiple files. Uh, but for now, we'll just do something simple. Uh, clear this page with the placeholder content and add a heading text says I'm alive. Then add two Shatzian buttons, a primary and secondary button to get us started. And so we'll just submit that. And hopefully this turns out the same. Uh, this is AI, right? Like it's not always going to generate exactly what you want um, in the first try. So this might be a spot where you're iterating and playing with it. And so we can kind of see it's done. It's um, kind of told us what's happening. You can see the changes in red is what it's removed. Um, in green is what it's added. You can do a couple of things. You can, you know, save all the changes, reject them if you don't want to use them or accept them. Um, what's nice about Composer is it's made these edits. It's saved them. We're kind of in a holding state. I'm like, do we want to commit this to our code um, or keep iterating? If we jump back to our local host, you can see it's um, saved those changes and already like rendered them. So I'm alive. We have our two Shatsy and buttons here. That's great. That's what I want. So we'll go ahead and hit accept. 
Um, and there we go, it's made those changes. So that's one way you can do it. The other way, which I like is for more precision stuff. So if I'm working on like a specific component or just need to like readjust a layout, um, we can, so you can hit Command A um, to select all the text. Um, maybe you wanna select just these div ones, right, for exa example, but uh, you can hit Command K to prompt AI. So we'll just go ahead and select this div hit command K. You can kind of just like chat with your AI here. Um, however you want, you can also reference documentation in the other files, but just for example, we'll say make this page background pink. We'll just submit that. And so it's kind of went through and made the changes in red. You can see what it's removed in green. You can see it's changed just this line added a background pink of 100. This is a tail, Tailwind CSS class. Um, what's different from Composer is it has not saved this um, until we accept it, right? So it won't appear in your local host yet. So we'll go ahead and hit accept. Um, we still need to save. And once we do that, our local host should update. Let's go check. Okay, now you can see on local host, we have a pink background. Great. And so the final step I'll walk through on how I usually work is, you know, I'm working locally, making some of these changes, and now I want to, you know, save them uh, and get them deployed to that link. So maybe I can share it. Uh, maybe it's a production link. Maybe it's a private link I'm sharing with my teammates uh, just to experience that prototype. So what we'll do is we'll go to back to our GitHub desktop. When you open that back up, you can now see uh, every change you've made in the project. So you can go through the left nav. It has all the components we've added um, and things like that, our cursor rules. Uh, you can go through here and select what you want to commit, what you don't want to commit. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and commit all of it. So down here we'll describe what we did. So we'll just put setup project. You can give it a description if you want, but we will commit that to our main. Um, but the one more step we need to do to get that pushed to our GitHub repo and to Vercel is we'll just push to origin. And it is off and running. So if we jump back to Vercel into our dashboard, we can go to deployments and you can see it is building one right now. Um, right, this is saved to our GitHub. Uh, once it was saved to GitHub, Vercel picked it up and it's just going to get that deployed for you. So there's really no um, steps beyond that GitHub desktop app that you need to do to get it to that live link, which is great. Um, you might find errors here in your deployment, depending on what you're doing. Um, if you do, uh, just open up that deployment one. Um, it will give you logs. You can copy that and go back to Cursor's Composer, paste that in, have it troubleshoot for you until you can get like your your build deployed. Okay, so this deployment is ready. You can see the preview, um, I'm alive. If we go ahead and visit that, there it is. It's on a working um, URL we can share with people. And so that's kind of how I work with uh, Cursor um, and kind of the tools I use to start prototyping things, building components, building apps, um, etc. So uh, enjoy.